You do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. That's a quote from James Clear book, Atomic Habits, which you should check out if you haven't read, make it a priority this year. Today's video is all about the system that I use to plan my week. Let's get it. Hello, my name is Kevin. I'm not an expert. I don't really know anything, but I'd love to share with you my process for how I plan my week. It's a system that I use to make sure that I'm productive from Monday through Sunday, uh, almost without fail. It helps me make it really hard to have a bad week. So in this video, I'll talk about some of the main benefits of planning my week, the tools that I use, and the exact process that I use to get through it. This is a great video for anyone who's like trying to figure out how they can be a little more productive and a little more ready for their day, but like aren't quite sure where to start. So my philosophy in planning my week is less about doing things right and more about doing the right things. I figure if I can spend more time and more energy focused on the things that deliver more of the outcomes that I want in my life, that's better than just doing a lot of stuff even if I do that stuff really well. A weekly plan is kind of like a decision map. I've already made the decisions for what I need to do that day, so when I wake up, I can hit the ground running and I don't have to spend time and energy trying to figure out what the right thing to do is. So before we jump into the process, let me talk about the tools that I use. I try to keep things really simple. You know, too many tools makes it seem like I'm more efficient, but really it's just more overhead things I need to track. So I only use three things. The first is a whiteboard. I'm a very visual person. I like to see what I'm writing down. I even have a color system that I use. The second is my calendar. I use my calendar to track events, things that I need to be at, engagements that I have, or things that I need to remember. And the third thing I use is a little app that I'm creating called Tetheros, and it is where I have all my professional task work goals, initiatives, things that I'm working on. But a lot of people will use notebooks or apps on their phone, whatever it is that they can use. It's important that the system works for you and not against you. So even though these are my tools, you may find that something else works a lot better for the way that you process through things and remember what you have to do. There's even people who put literally every single thing in their calendar and that's their single source of truth. And that works fine too. So let's jump into the planning process now. So the end result of my planning process is a whiteboard that has tasks and stuff written on it, which I'll talk about getting there. So, but the first thing I do in the planning process is I look at the whiteboard and I see how I did the previous week. I try to reflect on the things that I wasn't able to get to or plans that I made that I really didn't have to make and why that was. And I try to look through all the major decisions I made that week to see if there's any gaps or leaks or surprises that I need to be aware of in the upcoming week. After I've learned what I can learn about the previous week, then I jump into the next step, which is really just setting the high level objectives for the week. I think setting objectives like this is extremely important because if you don't know where you're going, you might end up somewhere else. Yogi Berra said that. So the objectives I set are kind of these weekly objectives, like these big outcomes that I wanna have for the week, but they tie into this larger roadmap that I work on all the time pretty much of where I wanna go with my life and with my business. A lot of this is done at my annual planning when I think about what the year looks like. So these goals that I create are kind of these interim milestones that I wanna achieve at the weekly level. The goals anchor all the little task work that I do throughout the week to make sure that every task I do means something. It's, it's directly connected to one of these outcomes that I'm trying to achieve. And so I lay out these goals in a few different categories of life. I don't always get every category every week, but I essentially try to break it down into something with my health, something with my faith, something with my business, and something with my personal life, recreation, whatever it is, things that I want to achieve. For example, I try to get at least 5,000 steps, which doesn't sound that high, but when you're just sitting at your desk all day, you kind of need to make that work inside the house somehow. So I end up doing laps downstairs. But one of my weekly goals this last week was to get 5,000 steps daily at, at least. I had some things that came up where I exceeded that, but that was my health goal for the week. I had a business goal to release a version of my application that I'm working on and I had another goal for finishing a book that I'm reading. So with my objectives out of the way, the next thing I do is I move into my calendar. I look at what are the events that I really have either no control over or they were planned long in advance that are occurring this week that I need to work around or need to remember? So in practice on my whiteboard, what this looks like is I've got my goals written off to the side. And then at this point, I'm using a system where I create a box for every day of the week. And in the boxes, I put the personal events or calendar things 
that are going to occur there. And in this next step is where I actually plan the week and put the, the high level tasks that I need to accomplish. So step four is actually building out the activities that I'm going to take place on the week. And this is a fairly fluid process. I don't try to schedule literally every single thing that I'm going to do on my whiteboard. I don't have enough space for that, but I try to capture what are the biggest things that need to happen in that day. So for my business, I have a, a business roadmap, things that I want to accomplish. And that's laid out long term, but it has these interim milestones. So one thing that I do is I look at what is the milestone for this week? What are the things that are promising there? And I try to build out the major deliverables for that. If you think about it like a project on the whiteboard. So the whiteboard is a great tool because it's visual for me. I can see that I can reference it quickly. I can erase things. It's I know digital is obviously more convenient in a lot of ways, but I'm a, a very hands on type person. And, and this is really helpful for me. So I want to hop over to some of the tools I use that I mentioned. Like I said, for work, I have a roadmap for my business, things that I want to accomplish. And what you're looking at here is my two week plan. Essentially, it has what I think is going to be delivered for milestones about two weeks out from where I am today. I'd look at this after planning my week, putting my goals on the calendar. And then I flip over to the app that I talked about that's called Tetheros that has the kind of the real brains of the operation. It's where I take all that work, that high level stuff, and I break it into manageable chunks of work that need to get done. And I use this in a lot of different ways, but one of the primary things that I do is I look at this work here that I have on a Kanban board and I try to place everything in my this week column that I know I'm gonna be working on based on what I planned. And as I make progress, I move it through the according column. So if I had it, if I was actively working on it, I would put it here. And then when I'm waiting to actually push it into the real world, I would put it there. And then when it's done, I have a done column. The whiteboard is kind of like the big map. And then I get way more specific until I get to this point where I'm actually breaking that workout into chunks. And on Sunday night, when I plan my week, I don't necessarily sit here and grind out all the details on these little bits of work. I kind of hit those in real time, but I do, do try to capture at least the main idea of what I'm working on. And that day when I want to approach that work, I will start to break down the details of the details of how to get that done. The final step in planning my week is resetting. So any outstanding emails, anything that I have to pay for, any budgeting items that I need to track, I try to get all of that stuff done so that when I wake up on Monday morning, it's all ready to go. It's kind of this fresh start. And for me, that's energizing. I like starting with a fresh slate. So resetting is where I will read through and file away every email to get to inbox zero. I'll deal with every comment. I'll respond to every DM. I'll watch videos that I've put aside that I felt like I needed to get done. I'll read the articles I need to get done. And when I'm done with all that, everything's kind of at zero a little bit so that when I wake up on Monday morning, I'm ready to go. So I've been planning my week for over two years and there's a lot that I've learned by doing that. The first is that, like I said earlier, the plan always shows up. I, I have to be disciplined in showing up, but I've already thought through what I have to do when I get there. And that makes a world of difference versus processing everything in real time and trying to tackle the work while also thinking about what work you should even be tackling. I kind of focus my brain there. Another thing I do is I try to theme my days. So I don't have to switch between the left side of my brain and the right side of my brain or just activities that just really don't go well together. It's not always perfect because, you know, things come up and you have to deal with it. But I'll try to put creative stuff on a day and have nothing but creative -ish stuff there. And then logical stuff on another day, maybe learning on another day, you know, all these different kind of segments of things that I want to do. I try to assign them to a specific day so that I can really harness my focus into that item. I try to be really adaptable as well. You know, like I put things on the whiteboard that sometimes I purposefully skip over or don't do either because something took longer than I thought or when I think about that activity, maybe I didn't think it would be as valuable as I did when I was planning it on Sunday night. So like, I'm okay with that. I think about it like being very, very stubborn about the objectives I set for the week but being extremely flexible about the details of how I get there. And I'm not married to my own process. This is something that I evolve over time. And this is the snapshot of what I do today. But like a few weeks from now, I may learn that some part of the process either needs to be pulled out or added so that I can make it better for me, especially since I'm trying to continuously learn about how I can be more productive as I learn about myself. This process isn't as important as what it delivers to me. So even though I do something every week, 
I'm not married to that as a requirement. If I decide it's not valuable, I'll pull it out. And if I learn about something else, I'll experiment with that too. The system gets built day by day, and as I change, the system also needs to change. But like I said, I don't know anything, I'm not an expert, and if you found any of this interesting, helpful, or valuable, consider liking, subscribe if you want to. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.